Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Maya Trochimczyk. I'm the president of California State Poetry Society, but here we are in a reading of Village Poets. I'm Village Poets, uh, Poet Laureate number six, and here uh, is our anthology. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary and we published an anthology of poets who appeared in the 10 years in our readings. We have 80 poems in the book, so we use it instead of the logo. I don't have a logo. And here is California State Poetry Society logo. So this is the other organization we're involved. Here with me in my house is Alice Perro, who is our Hi. board member and she's a chair of monthly poetry contests for the CSPS. And here is also Bori Hatch, who is our newest editor uh, of our California Quarterly. So these are the three people uh, with me in the room. And on the computer, we have so far 23 participants. So we have a very good attendance. And we're going to uh, start the open mic for all the open mic poets can read two uh, poems. And we'll start from Adina, who is uh, Romanian and she lives in Paris. So mm. welcome Adina and let's hear what you have to present for us. Yes, sure. I'm very happy to, to see you again. I will start, I will start and uh, thank you for the invitation. I will start with uh, the genius of the Romanian poetry, uh, Mihai Eminescu. And uh, he was born in 1880, and uh, he died in the, um, 89. Um, stay with me. It's the first poem. Stay with me. Oh, stay forever. I love you so much, my dear. All your longing, all your yearning, only I can truly hear. In the darkness of the shadows, you appear as in the guise of a prince who sounds the waters with his dark and gentle eyes. Where is I? Throw the waves roaring, through the swaying of tall grass, teach you how to hear in secret the great herds of deer that pass. I see you in rapt magic, humming in a heart soothing lay while your naked feet touch slightly the bright water of some bay. As you gaze at the moonlit water shimmering like fiery tears, all your life seems but a moment and sweet moments seem long ears. Those the woods spoke ear so gently, rocking treetops over me. At its call, I whistled. Laughing, I rushed out into the lee, where I to retrace those pathways, I could hear its call no more. Where, oh childhood, have you vanished with your forest, with your lore? And I'm gonna read the second one, Up to the Star. Up to the star that's just appeared, the journey's long and so for a thousand years, its lights careered to reach us here below. It may have faded on its way of old in blue spheres bright, through only now its shining ray unfolds to this our sight. The image of the star that died comes slowly to the fore it used to be when it would hide, we see what is no more. And likewise, while your reeling dove died in the deepest night, the light of the extinguished love still follows us in flight. And that's all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to have you here with us and read poems we never heard before, so thank you. All right, we have here uh, now a nice selection of poets from our Village Poets group and also from the group who are friends of our feature today. Maura Harvey, 
uh, is a wonderful poet and artist, and I know Mora because she is a, one of the editors of the California Quarterly uh, for California State Poetry Society. So Mora is in Northern California, and she invited her, some of her friends to join us. So maybe Mora, you would like to uh, ask one of your uh, poets friends to read next. I think we'll do like four or five open mic. Okay, I'd love to, but I don't know who are the ones who would like to read. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's what I don't know anyone. Maybe somebody should raise, raise their hand. Let yeah. this as a poem. The gallery view and see if somebody is a volunteer. Some are just, I think some are here to listen. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so is is somebody volunteering to uh, read? Do we have somebody raising a hand? There we go. There you are. Okay, well, let me just find you on the list and unmute you. Catabella is here, but I've seen her shining face for a long time. Okay, where is where's Judy? Catabella. Right there. Oh, okay, there she is. Ask to unmute. Okay. All right, so just a minute. Can you unmute yourself, Judy? Okay. Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, okay, this first piece is called. Ballet Natural. Shadows of branches mix with sunlight on the ground as invisible breeze creates music to which they dance. Dark and light mingle, then separate, now together, now apart, while above ground limbs lift and sway like graceful arms clothed in green leaves and white petaled flowers, which they scatter to show appreciation to the dancing shadows. Inside, at my window, I watch the shadows, a waltz on the stereo. My arms mimic branches as music fills me, and I waltz around the room, swaying, turning, up, down, lost in music and movement, until as the last notes recede, I return again to the window to watch the movement outside and become sadly aware the tree dances with so much more grace than I. <clears throat> and I can, can do a second poem? Okay. Uh, this one is called Jazz Plus Two Glasses of Wine. So you have the radio tuned to K-Jazz and just catch the end of a Miles Davis tune. You're alone in your office, standing at your computer. You have a gizmo on your desk that raises the computer to eye level so you can type standing up. You steadily sip your second glass of grape while you try to think of something to write because you want to have something new, something jazzy to present to your friends. Stray thoughts slowly seep from your fingertips to the keyboard and onto the screen. Soft piano music, sort of tinkly and watery, but kind of jazzy, sneaks up on you from behind and traces the entire perimeter of your body, up one side, over your head, and down the other. And you feel that outline like a wave of piano keys, all tinkling somewhere up around the high C. The big bass fiddle starts to speak in a low, throaty pulse tone that your brain doesn't quite translate, but your body does, and it begins to move. Your weight shifts from one leg to the other, easy-like, as it replicates the rhythm. Then there's the muted brush strokes from the drums, which your knees hear, and they start to move, and, and your hips follow. You're really getting into the groove. You're stand dancing at your computer, sinking onto the screen when the trombone slips in with its low rhythmic vibe and your shoulders start a slow shimmy. Now your thoughts are in rhythm and your hands on the keyboard can't keep up. And then, then a trumpet starts to whine and wail and oh man, then come the saxophones which always make you sweat. First the baritone begins to a low growl. Then the alto starts to tease and taunt, and finally the tenor joins in and takes you to the top of the world. And damn, you're trying to get some work done, but your hips are swaying, your knees are bouncing, your shoulders are shaking, and your ha head's rocking back and forth like a bobblehead doll. And your hands, your poor hands, try to stay on the keyboard, but the music, the music lifts them up, and they move with it and can't type another word. 
I love this poem. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so we have Beverly Collins here with us. Beverly, would you like to be the next one to read two poems, please? Yes, and hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to start with a poem called Campfire. This is a poem that I recently wrote. I cannot recall whose pocket held the matches or which hand ignited the flame. But there it was, a living fire with all a will all its own. To warm the area for the people seated near it was an afterthought. The fire came only to dance. Its swirl batted away darkness around us as dry wood crackled under its movement. We talked cross-legged to one another, our words spoken in the direction of the fire and was instantly burnt away along with laughter and whispers. Our fire confidant ensured that what was said at the fire stayed at the fire. Like all smoky stories heaped in ashes by the next morning, never to be heard again. Thank you. And my second one, I'm gonna share from the anthology called Glow. Uh, my, the one that they picked for me is called Sweet. The fields waved like a crowd of partygoers in motion. Orange tops of flowers danced everywhere the eye could see. The pour of rain was as good for them as grandma's meal was for us on a Sunday evening. Chatter circled the dinner table under the watchful glow of three large candles anchored in the center of the table. The chicken dinner burned that night. However, gossipy events of our week steamed as topic of conversation until the sharing exhausted itself into the sip of coffee, peach cobbler, and a side game of checkers that was just right. Who knew those moments could morph into pure gold, wrapped in all the warmth that a memory could unroll? So laughable and so simple. Thank you. Oh, I have here um, Marjorie Pezzoli, um, one of Mora friends. Marjorie, I don't know how to pronounce it. Sorry for butchering your name. Could you uh, read next? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have two short ones. Mind movies, cloud stories. In the movies of my mind, I see you peeking over the edge of separation. Clouds light up. Brilliant outlines indicate your presence. Winds of change, winds change direction. Colors of love fill the sky. The sheer beauty of another day causes emotions to run down my cheeks. Every frame tells a story. Scripts written in the sky floats by. Leaves of Wonder. The days of winter hang on to the twinkling brown leaves of fall. Branches sparkle with anticipation. Let's go one, two, eventually all. Each leaf released contains wishes for a new season. Leaves me to wonder what will come next. Spring will answer that. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And now we have Alice Perot here with me. Let's just turn the camera so we can see Alice. Alice, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hi, everyone. So um, it's nice to be back. Um, I'm going to read some three very short poems and then one longer one, because these three are like the equivalent of one. And these are old poems from the 80s, and I res I'm resurrecting them. And the first one, if I could write the past away, in one single roar, my pen would make men smile and leap and end the endless grumbling in their sleep. And mountains move and rivers shake with laughter, I would make them with 10,000 suns all shining, I have spaced them with my gliding thought I send. If I could write the past away, replace the pain with glory. I would find an end to weary men, 
I would make new days again. Portions of this poem have been read before. At breakfast in another year, before the winds of space took my love away and blew me to machines and time. Portions of this poem, not seen by traveling eyes, were found again in new lit trees by travelers who knew the way to unmaking moments. Why travel far, say I, when poems speak here in our instant universe? Perfect. When is perfect made again? It was lost in ancient suns. It was lost in dragon fire. It was lost in choosing friends who sucked my love. When will perfect rain again? When you dissipate the lies? When you look into my eyes with the love of truth? And this is a recent poem, obviously, from the beginning of this month. Shoving the old year off. It doesn't take much to shovel a day from one year to the next, just the lightest of touch, like forgetfulness or the child's soft breathing as he lies down with grandpa for a nap. I can give the day a soft shove, a whisper or a muted cry, nothing anyone would notice, like standing on the edge of a cliff and throwing away a feather. On the last day of December here in LA, it was very windy, as though someone wanted 2020 to make a dramatic exit, as though it hadn't been dramatic enough. I mutter, Overkill already, in my best Jewish mother voice. I am asking the wind to die down so I can deliver a proper elegy, sotto voce. Dear 2020, we did not love you, but someone will. Perhaps in the flames of hell, you will impress the devil and he will dress you in a suit of fire where you will burn eternally as you had desired. Now the wind has obeyed and I am going out in my backyard to gently push the dying year away. I am summoning angels and beings of good intent to bring us a shining bright new year one with spotless diapers and a golden, golden halo. Thank you. All right, that was beautiful. And now uh, let me uh, try something with a share screen. Okay, and where is this share screen here? We have... Uh, I think it's time for me to introduce our feature, Maura Harvey. Here we see one of her paintings. She will show some more. This is what we have on our blog. Maura Harvey is an award-winning bilingual poet whose work has appeared in collected works and venues from San Diego to Venezuela. Her art has been exhibited internationally from Mexico to Istanbul. She feels at home in the world because her home is where her art takes her. And more information about her art and her poems, you can be found on her website, moraharvey.com. And now I'm going to stop sharing screen of mine and I'm going to make Mora uh, a host right now so she can show her art. We had some problems, technical issues when we start, but we keep our uh, closed and hopefully everything will go very well. So now, Maura, I'm passing on the baton to you. Okay, thank you. There you are. I hope I'm working. I'm, are you seeing me? Yes. Okay, well, let's see what, for some reason, I'm trying to do this right. 
All I see is you. You're beautiful. Uh, you can do the gallery view maybe, and then you'll see. I'm going to mute myself now. Okay. Maybe that'll do it. You will not see me after I mute. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I like to see you, Maya. Anyway, I really like to see all of you. Can you hear me? Okay, everyone. Okay. Well, it's a great to see people from all over the world and meet new people today. Especially, it was interesting to meet someone from Romania, where my my great grand well, my grandmother was really born in Romania. And my cousin is here from Hungary. So that's kind of an honor and exciting. But my first poem, I would like to dedicate to my daughters and their kids. And these are the people who really know what it's like in our kitchen in the morning. Morning frolic. We meet up most mornings in the kitchen. Faithful, you fill my horizon. You confide in me and I admire how you design your day. No matter how I turn my morning eyes, I find you there, engaged in my everyday life. So real, so delicate, gentle in your tireless pursuit, devoted. How I admire your perseverance, enamored, inspired. Still, I cannot fully trust you. I face the truth. You are not here for me. You're here for the crumbs I leave, for yesterday's compost. You're here for the honey. What I have missed when tidying up becomes your life. So ends the rapture. I pause, then quickly wipe you off the counter. See you tomorrow, my kitchen ants. I know you'll be there for me. Now I'm going to try to share screen. See how this works. Let's see if we can do it. This is where I slow down and you can think about kitchen ants for a while or whatever. Let's see if I can do it. Hmm. Anyway, this is a painting of when I went to Cuba. I'm trying to show you. I don't know if I can do it. Uh, anything happening? No? No. Well, a little frustrating. Okay, let's see. I made a collage and it's really kind of fun, but it doesn't seem like it's going to show. Anyway, any luck? No? No? Yes? Okay, great. This is a poem I wrote in Spanish. I went to Cuba several times, three times, and I'm a very curious person. So this poem is called Questions for Cuba. And by the way, I hope you all get to go there. Questions for Cuba. As soon as I arrive, I start the questions. You watch me patiently, moist eyes, January rain. I request clarity, dates, reasons. You deliver songs, guavas, sugared coffee. The light of a hurricane illuminates my offerings, memories, desires, hope, in exchange for your fateful strength. We get acquainted, barely touching in Havana, vertigo of mansions, broken streets, mildewed angels, cosmic saints of a victorious race, we share words, signs of life. 
I fall in love, faint at your side. You lift me from where I have fallen, carry me to a green field. Here, I forget questions, rest my mind, heal my hopes in the blue air. Caribbean certitude whispers, hasta siempre, farewell, until always. And this poem, I originally wrote in Spanish. So I like to write in Spanish the most. I had a great experience being in a, a poetry group with on both sides of the border with Tijuana and San Diego, Taller del Mar. So I began to write a lot of poems in Spanish. Preguntas para Cuba. Llegando, empiezo con las preguntas. Me miras, paciente, ojos húmedos, lluvia de enero. Te exijo claridad, fechas, razones. Me entregas canciones, guayabas, café azucarado. La luz del huracán ilumina mis ofrendas, recuerdos, deseos, esperanza, al cambio de tu fuerza fatídica. Nos vamos conociendo apenas tentándonos en La Habana, vértigo de mansiones, calles rotas, modo de ángeles, santos cósmicos de una raza victoriosa, Compartimos palabras, signos de vida. Me enamoro. A tu lado me desmayo. Me levantas de donde he caído. Me llevas a un prado verde. Aquí olvido las preguntas. Descanso la mente. Cicatrizo mis esperanzas en el aire azul. La certeza caribe me susura hasta siempre. And now we're going back to English. I imagine a lot of you got a lot of those words. <laughs> I was a Spanish teacher, so it's always kind of there for me. And I hope I can try one more share screen because this is a poem. Wait a minute, I think I should unscare screen. This is a poem that I would like to thank my fellow poets, some of whom are here today, um, from a group called Crohn's, and we are we are working on uh, lots of poems, including. Let's see if I can do this. It's very fast, hard for me, unfortunately. Um, we are doing uh, what's called shape poems, but I don't know if I'm going to get this. But I'm still trying. It's nice of you guys to be so patient as I'm trying to share the screen. Mm. Let's see if it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't think it's happening. <laughs> we see well, you. <laughs> you see me. Well, at least you see yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to skip this poem then because I wanted to show it to you, but it's it really is better if you see it. So we'll move forward. This poem is called A New House. And I think of our country like a house. Remember the house we live in, this beautiful song that was sung in the 30s and 40s, Paul Robeson. This is called A New House, and I'm dedicating this poem to George Floyd A new house. I ring the doorbell. If I don't find you, I will search again. I don't intend to stop. I want to enter the prison of your life. Fly through the sky of your brown skin, see the world through the tears you cry, comb my hair with your curls. I will swallow the words of my false language. Change the laws that torture you, inject myself with your blood, pardon myself as you pardon me. Toss the keys to your cell in the sea, no padlock needed. 
I will no longer look for you. We will be walking barefoot along the beach, singing your hymns to calm our night fever together in our new house. Okay. And this next poem, I wanted to share the screen, but I think it's getting to be too hard. <laughs> but I do have a lot of paintings of, of painted ladies, those orange and black butterflies that you've probably seen. And they fly around in Southern California, Northern, all through the West. And this poem is called Winged Arithmetic. And I originally wrote it in Spanish. And the first section, I just quoted Garcia Lorca. La luna es un pozo chico, las flores no valen nada. Lo que vale son tus brazos cuando de noche me abrazas. And that means the moon is a little puddle, flowers are of no value. What has value are your arms when you embrace me at night. Winged arithmetic. Every April, you tell me again that 20 years ago, a butterfly migration passed through here. Clouds of painted ladies, amber silk dotted in black, flying flowers. On a wing day, the travelers return to San Diego. I have prepared a list of questions for you. Are there as many as then? Where do they come from? Where are they going? Where do they sleep when evening falls? Do you like them as much as the ones from 20 years ago? I want to inhabit your sky, be its only memory. In the arms of night, I stop counting, days flee like migrants in the air. Thank you. Thank you all very much for listening to a variety of my poems written over the years. Thank you. And this is another poem. This is about a Mexican woman, an attorney who was working. Well, you'll hear what she was doing. And I met her up here in San Diego. We have a lot to do with Mexico, as you know, in San Diego and all through California. This is about Digna Ochoa y Plácido. Digna. Digna, they named you Digna, worthy. I remember the day when I met you to El Norte, to my tranquil town on the coast. You brought your world of danger shared, death threats. I envied the truth in your eyes. Now you lie in Misantla in Veracruz. With you lie your secrets, your dreams, victim like those you defended, students, guerrilleros, traffickers of human rights, precious daughter of Misantla, you needed more years. In the obscure days of the defense of your final hours, I pray you inspire us with your light. Illuminate suspicions, give us faith. May human justice be reborn and we be worthy of your memory. Digna died in 2001. She was murdered. Mm -hmm. So now on a more family level, although the whole world is really our family and we see it today here. Uh, this is a poem about my father and my father was very involved with California State Poetry Society and some of you, well, 
Some of you know that and some of you knew him. And this is called Dancing with Daddy. On dewy mornings, you showed me how to chew on wild herbs. I learned the names of flowers, hugged the trunks of oaks to hear the voice of their insides. We found the rings where the good fairies dance and the grotto where elves carry off bad children. Afternoons were for obligations. I counted syllables for my moon sonnet. I washed the car in the patio shade, opened sardine cans without cutting myself on the sharp key. You taught me to stand pain like the Stoics. I became a Greek philosopher, but then you quoted Omar so that I would grow to taste life hour by hour, savor grapes in the sunny vineyard. Along the hills on turbid nights, you sang Irish ballads of war and unlove. I dared not look into your blue poet eyes. Today, you take my arm, I help you walk, Remember when you took me to discover an enchanted world. Daddy, you never asked me to dance, not on my wedding day, nor any day. Now begins the waltz never danced. I take your hand. Thank you and thank you for listening to these poems today. It means a lot to me. I'm also noticing that my mother is listening and she is an amazing, wonderful person. And we really are unusual as a family because we still have our matriarch and she is 105 years old in March. Wow. That <laughs> a little applause too. Anyway, this is a poem I had wanted to show you a, a, a retablo. I make retablos too, and there's one about this poem, but I'm having trouble with the screen. So anyway, this poem is for mother and it's called Offering for My Mother. This was written when she was a mere 89. So we're going back. And now at 105, she's just about the same, but she doesn't go out to garden quite as much. Offering for my mother. When it doesn't rain and the day has dried a little, you go out to work in the garden. At 89, you like to feel the wet earth, prune branches, do some weeding. Like spring in California, you give more than you expect. Shine with little girl surprises. You come inside with a bouquet for me, hyacinths, calla lilies, roses. A bromeliad breathes blue kitchen air. You serve me milk tea. Listen to my stories, tell me yours. With the joy of purple irises that multiply from happiness. My refuge, I watch you change with the seasons. Beside the fire in the living room, you rest when the sun goes down. Remember other gardens, dream new colors, pansies, daisies, geraniums to plant. Thank you. And then this poem, I have a couple more here, not too many more. <laughs> uh, this one is someone we can't forget, and that is my husband, who was the one helping me share screen today. <laughs> but anyway, he's been helping me with a lot all through my many years I've been married to him. But this is really dedicated more to his t-shirt than to him. 
<laughs> his t-shirt says carpe diem seize the day so this is my thoughts and maybe you have some you can share too later about carpe diem rare rose we notice we are growing old there are signs Still the day dawns in sky poetry, gray hemp clouds slashed by shimmering salmon. I think carpe diem. Turn to feel your smooth shoulder. Seize my thoughts and yearn for more shining mornings, more than just this day. But I do not seize, I caress today. Along the sunny path, I find a small treasure. A lilac colored rose, breathe her roseness, count each petal, every leaf and drop of dew. The rose whispers her secret, we like her, are growing rare, she tells me. And old is counted in years, but rare appears in endless blossom clouds, in morning quiet, slits of sun, again and again, as each new day awakens. Thank you. I feel that this is for me a personally a great way to be starting January or ending January almost and starting this new year. And I'm really glad to be doing this with you today. This is a poem that reminds me of my childhood when I was 13 in Mexico City where I was an exchange student, I learned to embroider. Here I have a little bit of embroidery not done by me, but I really still love to embroider. And this is a poem called Message Threads. Message Threads. Cassandra has taken up embroidery so she can sit and listen. Neighbors' voices, lawnmowers, and skateboards sirens and crows, flutter of a swallow tail. She hears melodies her father used to sing, words of love and war, lights in the desert night, sun after rain, peace in chaos. Embroidery sharpens her hearing. She discerns far off civil war a mall shooting, airplane crash, a glacier calving, the crowds in Paris. She sews too fast, her fingers bleed. She works her warning into the fabric, listens with all her might to sounds of the dying universe. Thank you. And then back to the butterflies and to end my reading today is a poem about once again, butterflies, this time the monarchs. And I'm sure many, lots of you in California are planting milkweed because that is what monarchs like to eat. So I'd just like to thank you all for coming so much. And I'll just end this reading with this poem called Milkweed Hope. And I would like to thank especially my grandchildren for attending this, my relatives, my friends, and somehow we're all connected through our poetry and friendship. And this is my appreciation poem for all of you. Thank you. This is called Milkweed Hope. 
I have a soft spot for arachnids. Tireless ants hypnotize. Wasps can impress. A roly poly makes me giggle. The bee buzzes and the world is young. But you, monarch, in a burst of fiery wings, you light up dark dreams, unravel old sad clouds. When hunger and disease stalk the planet, you who have survived blight and death, you arrive. A nomad like you, I roam from house to house, plant milkweed, wait for your return. Suddenly one silent day you are here to save your lineage, you float gently in. While I migrate a clumsy route, dragging my cocoon of dreams and fears. From orange gauze, your black eyes pierce me and I follow you as you set forth again to save the future. Soon your offspring, drunk on milkweed, flutter and float the air. Like them, I am redeemed by your endless hope. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it, your visit and the time with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maura. It was very colorful, vivid, mm -hmm. and really inspirational. So what a lovely reading. Thank you so very much. And uh, I don't know if you would like to have a little conversation before we move on to the, another uh, set of open mic readers. Would, like, would anybody like to have a comment? about the poetry that we just heard. Uh, if you, if yes, I'll, I'll do the gallery view and I'll have uh, whoever raises the hand, which is, you raise your hand, oh, Ed Rosenthal. I un unmute Ed first. Is Ed on the list? Is he Ed? Uh, he was for the top. For the top. Oh yeah, there he is. Okay. Do I need to first give you back? I think I need to give you oh, back. Oh, yeah, that's right. You need to give me back to give back. Because I'm trying to unmute Ed and nothing happening. So find your name and I'm new host. Oh, yeah. machines. <laughs> right. I learned this one thing today. Thank you. Got it. Can okay, so it? I'm back. Okay. So can you do it yourself? Yes, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I can unmute Ed. Ed Rosenthal, you had a comment? Ed, where are you? Oh, I think it's really wonderful to be um, spiritual and progressive at the same time. And, you know, that's the direction I, I'd like to move in. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Oh, Tati, Tati, where's Tati? Oh, this list is so long. No. Oh, there. It is a very simple question, Mar. I wanted to know if the painting that we see behind you are yours. The yeah. one <laughs> those are mine. This one here is Russian by a guy in Moscow. It's Dmitry. But I was focusing on yours because we can see them somehow. And so they complemented the, the reading. And then if it's possible, I would have a request. Could you add even a very, very short poem, even one you read before in Spanish? I would oh, like to, yeah. to would, end with your voice in Spanish. To okay, get I, I could do any of those short ones again because I have tons of them in Spanish. Okay, that was my request. Thank you. You want to do it right now even? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Go. This is, I love this one. It's kind of about, in a way, it's about migrants at the same time that it's about butterflies, I guess. I don't know. This is that one about the butterflies. I guess that's the one that's easiest for me to find right now. It's called, I wrote it in Spanish first. That's why I think they sound a little different in Spanish. But thank you for, I didn't know how many people would like Spanish. It's called Aritmetica de Alas. It's like arithmetic of wings. 
cada abril vuelves a contarme que hace 20 años pasó por aquí una migración de mariposas. Nubes de damas pintadas, seda ámbar con puntitas negras, flores volantes. En un día al lado regresaron a San Diego. Te preparé una lista de preguntas. ¿Son tantas las nuestras como las de entonces? ¿De dónde vienen? ¿A dónde van? ¿Dónde duermen cuando cae la tarde? ¿Te gustan tanto como las de hace 20 años? Quiero habitar tu cielo, ser su única memoria. En los brazos de la noche dejo de contar, huyen los días como migrantes en el aire. That was it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. That was lovely. All right, so uh, we have a fair number of our village poets. I would like to call on Casabella Ka Wilson. Casabella, uh, would you like to read next? Yes, just let me get my flute player. Oh, yeah, the flute player is coming. All right. <laughs> Very good. And then I'm mm -hmm. asking for volunteer readers. Um, the sky is oh, oh, Scott, in the right. very beginning. Uh -huh. he's, he's coming. Oh, okay. He was okay. one of the guys that. Okay, so board. we'll ask Scott Galasso after Casabella and okay. the flute player who is coming with the flute. <laughs> after Casabella, we'll have Scott Galasso. And after Scott, we'll have uh, Seal Borman. Seal uh, and Scott are the next ones to come on. Okay, here is Rick, and he'll tell you what he's playing. Uh, this is a small, relatively small bonsiri, uh, North Indian traditional uh, flute, bamboo, six holes. I'd like to also say, Mara, that was very beautiful and very loving poetry. You can just feel your family and all the people you love in the poem. So I really appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm going to read from uh, the anthology, the poems that Maya put in the anthology. Childhood wisdom. Holding the knot of a hard, hot pretzel. All the mysteries seem clear. As we ferry across the bay, above, distant, the gulls spiral and turn. I see invisible labyrinths. They draw with their wings. And here below, I know the dark is filled. It's full, filled with fast moving, flying fish. Clear summer evening, getting ready for the great ball. Mount Fuji puts on her red dress. Clear summer evening, getting ready for the great ball. Mount Fuji puts on her red dress. Like a painting, a blue heron, maybe Mira, like a painting of blue heron, my heart flips like a brush full of sky. Good for the painter. Like a painting of blue heron, my heart lifts like a brush full of sky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Casabella. It's always a treat to have both of you in our readings. 
So I ask uh, Scott to be the next one after you. Let me see where is Scott on the list. Top. On the top. Very top. There he is. Oh, he's unmuted. So Scott, it's your turn now. Welcome to the reading. Oh, he's not there. Oh, where is he? Where's Scott? He had headsets on. He's right there. Oh, we can't oh, we can, hear you. We can't hear him though. Oh, we can't hear you at all. You unmuted, but we can't hear you. I don't know what's wrong. Scott. Headphones. <laughs> Technical difficulties. That's what happens with machines. Machines hate us and they always want to ruin our lives. That's my experience. If I have to do with oh, machines. Can hear <laughs> no, we can't hear you. I wonder, it must be his computer somehow. Maybe, maybe the computer is, uh, has sound off. I sometimes mute my computer. Completely, because I don't like the ping and bong. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Uh -huh. We still, he's, no, we can't hear. No. Him. Okay, Scott, we need to uh, put you in the line back again because it's not working. We can't hear anything, none at all. So I will ask, uh, therefore, Seal Borman. We'll see if we have better luck with Seal and her mic because, Scott, we can't hear you at all. So we're moving on to Seal. Okay, sorry about that. Where is the, where is, uh, where is, where is Seal? I'm here. Oh, all right. So Seal, is your turn now. Two poems. Welcome. Okay. Two poems. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, you know what? I write, I just finished writing some poems for kids that go to school who are in school. And so I would like to read these poems for you adults. And maybe you would tell me what you think the kids might like these poems. Okay. I'll leave it up to you guys. The first one is called Social Graces. Social graces are easy to learn. All you need is the desire to learn. Saying excuse me, thank you and please, help to make easy the life you lead. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Respecting an elderly person. A gift from grandma or auntie or a friend deserves a reply before you see them again. Pleased to meet you. Can I shake your hand? May I help you with that? Do all that you can. Without social graces, the world is a bad, bad place. Selfish, rude people, no respect on their face. What a terrible way to start your day. With social graces, more people will smile. Discover new friends. Sit and visit a while. Ask permission before you borrow a thing and return it in the condition that you borrowed it in. And when invited over to spend the night, don't be a jerk, be polite. Remember, no fair cutting in line because being a bully is a waste of time. And when you drop something on any floor, clean it up before you walk out the door. Without social graces, the world is a bad, bad place. That's that one. Did you hear me? <laughs> okay, one more. One more. This one is, I'm telling them how important it is for them to learn to read. It's so important to learn to read about the things you're gonna need to make your way every day. Reading is the only way. So open a book and take a real good look. Expand your mind, do it full time. Reading for life is the essential key to open the doors of opportunity. Not knowing how to read will take you off track and it will do nothing but hold you back. Reading for life is good for the mind. The road to success is easier to climb. Reading is important. It can really make your day. Showing, knowing how to read will increase your pay. <laughs> Catch up on history really, really fast when you read all about the people from the past. Reading is your future. Create brand new ideas. You gotta learn to read. You gotta learn to read. You're never too young and you're never too old. Remember this creed, you gotta learn to read. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I love the reading poems because I love reading. So it's my yes, favorite. It's, we really go yeah. for kids, I think. The kids like rhyme and so it would flow very, very nicely. I think that Scott, meanwhile, okay. was Hear able to, yes, 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 yes. We have okay, now, so we right. Thank okay. you very much, Seal, and now it's time for Scott. Okay, so this first poem is called Bliss, and then I have a, uh, 
a uh, Tonka, five line Tonka, and one Haiku. Bliss. Not lost in remembrance. Not ruminating on what may be. Here, now, wrapped in silence. Aware of heartbeat, blood pulse, gesture of air. It's sweetness after rain. A solar benediction of warmth caressing skin. A hula sway of palm fronds, a Maxfield Parish kiss of light, the shimmer of its glow. Beside she who ennobles and is part of me, tomorrow is a rumor hidden as rings in trees. And then this uh, Zatanka, her touch quickens my skin, my touch flutters her eyelids. We are galloping horses. And then here's that haiku has a double meaning. River crossing, bull moose bellows, the herd follows. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very glad that the technical difficulties uh, were overcome and we could hear you. Maya, I have a question. Maya? Yes, what's the question? I have a question. I was wondering if Irene, who's with Madeline, I hope she liked my poems about learning how to read and social graces. Thank you, because she's the age. Thank you. <laughs> very good. All right. Very nice. Thank you very much. I think Mira Mataric. Mira, would you like to read something? Oh, I let me unmute Mira. Where's Mira? Oh, no. uh, would you like me to put it on the screen? Oh yeah, if you, uh, oh, I don't know, you, can you do it? Because I'm yes, not I really. Do I need to make you a host for that? No, uh, I don't think no, so. But you need to enable participation. Oh, okay, where's Mira? Okay, 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 okay. You're gonna do baby. You're gonna oh, there she is. More? Oh my God. What? Hello to, uh, so we have stop video spotlight, remove report, allow to multi pin, rename, put in waiting room, allow to record, make host. It doesn't have a participation on the list. Maya, right next to share screen, that's where uh, you can allow multiple participants to share screen, but it's just to the right of share screen, there's a little arrow. If you click on that, it gives you maybe three or four choices. Oh, okay. I did it. Yeah, it should be okay now. I clicked on it. Thank you very much, Carabella. Good. Oh, you see that okay? There it is. Yes, we, we see the poem. Thank you. A photo of a baby. You have to make it, make it, make it bigger though. <laughs> Um, All right, uh, you want to, that's about as big as I can get it right now. That's perfect. Okay. A photo of a baby. This picture in my bedroom looks at me all the time during the day and night and I have to smile because she's just as adorable now when she's 22 and a young, already successful scientist and also an artist modernist. She draws, paints, um, writes and publishes not only scientific papers, but also poetry and prose. When she does not play the piano, I, as her grandma, enjoy all of it, especially poetry and her playing the piano at my home. I still look at her photo as a baby and still enjoy that the most. And I'm going to live to have a photo of her baby. I know I'm asking too much, but I'm also gratefully enjoying my grandchildren in all stages of their development in all ages. I'm sorry my poem is not as beautiful as that baby photo. Okay. 
And one more poem. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. What to do with your ex? How do I delete traces of my ex love affair? Throw the smartphone into the trash. Start a new blank page with a fresh, self-created stage. Play the role with that script in short. Follow a brand new drift. First, do not fall into the ditch of daydreaming about any, especially not good moments together. They are gone. Do not dig into the trash for your phone. Get a new one if you must, but can you really trust yourself to keep him out of the picture? Remember, delete that mistake right now, fast. Donate the dress he liked, the one you wore on your first date to a homeless woman. The dress will start a new story and so will you. Wash all the traces. Forget unwanted faces. Use a newly discovered smile for your life with new people. Start a new hobby. Develop a passion. Change your hairstyle. Follow a trendy fashion. This is a new you. Love yourself now. What about the rest of the world? Facebook is asking questions, missing your chat with their choices of friends. LinkedIn is impatient with a list of never heard names. They also might dig out your forgotten old flames. Your life will be so loaded. You have no place for one more call, texting, email, letter, or fax. No time for new demands let alone some blasted X. You say what? <laughs> okay. And Maya, you'll let me know when you want me to read my two poems, right? Oh, okay. Why don't you read right away? Okay. Right on, so you'd be just, you know, one after another. It'd be very nice. All right. We're going to talk about my best friend first. My best friend. I do not know when I met you, nor do I remember our first meeting. It seems like one day you were just there and you've been there with me ever since. It could have been the first day of school way back in kindergarten, or it may have been when I had my first crush on a girl. It does, that does not matter because I can count on you. Good or bad, you're always there and always reliable. As we traveled through the years of maturity, well into adulthood, our emotions continued to grow. The intensity occasionally producing new physiological reactions, short and intense, I thought it important to be in control. It took a lot of years for you to train me to understand you always sent a physical sign that you were coming. You always gave me the tools to prepare and cope. It was my responsibility to decode the signs and prepare. Eventually, I was able to do it, but it took a long time. Today, after many years of fear and intimidation, I recognize the feelings that announce your presence and realize you want to influence my decision-making process. I know that you are truly my friend and want me to succeed. So I have finally learned to effectively use you, just like all the other tools in my kit. Anxiety, you are truly my friend. You have never abandoned me, always there to guide me and help succeed regardless of the circumstances. Anxiety, I love you. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> And the second one, uh, Mira and I were having a little discussion and she said, go write a poem. So if I were a poem, this one's unseen. If I were a poem, she would see me, hold me close and hear my words. If I were a poem, 
She would embrace me, caressing the paper that holds me and repeat my words with great passion. If only I were a poem, she would know the depths of my love, true and everlasting. But alas, I'm only a husband, like the wallpaper always there, just hanging around. <laughs> well, oh, very good, bravo. I hope you like it. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Very, very happy. Okay, so who haven't read yet? Lulu. Lulu, you haven't read, so let me just uh, switch to you and we'll have Lulu read. And then Totti hasn't read yet either. And uh, Ed, I think. Okay, Lulu. Okay. <clears throat> this one is called Breaking the Mold. Let's break the mold of old identity. Sociological fear cannot be our history. These were the lessons being taught children by 30 at the house of daddy. Listen with curiosity and speak honestly. Act with integrity and character, not personality. Lesson learned in life will mortify you to be. Personality is a learned habit. On that, we agree. The boundaries set forth with and by self, who we want to be, what we want to reach, to be centered in present, not in future bound, breaking the boundaries is what life is all about. Communicate by listening, not to reply by turn. We will hear when listening to understand. The words behind what has not been said, reaching the fullest potential effortless will be. Next one. I'll do a short one. Thank you. This is called Lily and Me. When God said to Lily, open your heart of beauty, Lily smiled and opened all of her petals fully. As I look at the lily, my heart opens automatically. I smile for lily and I share the life of possibility. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. So we have Tati next. Tati, you have a poem for us? Where is that? I will try to share the screen. Let's see if it's possible. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. I have a whole. Do I get it? You have it? Yes, we have it. Yes, thank you. Thank oh, you. So you can bridge over my accent. This is called Sleepless. As I sat between them, beneath them, they plucked from my hair oblong shapes of small size they hastily tossed in the nearby grass, the unkempt lawn invaded by tall weeds. I heard sighs of disgust, not a word. Their hands cleaved my scalp, mothers softer, lighter, their fingers at a nervous hammering twitch. Grandma's heavier, more poised, more insistent. My skull, a battlefield or a prairie stampeded by herds of pasturing beasts. I knew not how the things they found had first landed, perhaps sprouted among my proliferous mane. I preferred not to ask, eager for the invasion to be over, the expulsion complete. Ice, I thought grandma said, 
little ones for sure, perhaps ciliate with luscious like spider legs and which color I mused. Green, I guessed, like tender leaves, curious, indiscreet, perhaps lidless, eyes that never slept, so things they shouldn't have seen. And the next one is just the next one, harvest. Hmm. Gather, she said, each task as it falls. It is lighter than it seems. Do not mind the smell, sweaty, musky, and sour. It dissipates. Pick it up as soon as it falls. Feel the warmth exuding in waves, a small cloud of heat. Enjoy. Soon it will dissolve. Gather all, snow white, ivory, or tinged the colors of a rainbow. Take the whole and the broken. Don't mind cracks or dents. They'll be patched, then sanded, smoothed out. They will look like new. Here's an apron you tie at your waist and use like a pouch, a large pocket. They are lighter, I said, than they seem to be. Don't be scared, my darling. They won't bite. They don't anymore. Thank you very much. That was lovely. So now we have, uh, I have two poems, and then we have a, a poem from uh, Bori, and that would be uh, the closing of the reading. Unless there's somebody else who'd like to raise their hand and read something. So please uh, raise your hand on the screen so I can see, uh, and then we can read. So uh, I would like to share the screen because the, we had a uh, grandmother's day very recently. Where's my grandmother? This way I can find it. Okay. And uh, grandmothers and I, my aunt, posted a photograph of my great-grandmother on Facebook and that inspired me to pull out some of the older poems that I wrote uh, for my grandma and uh, this is Constantia Weischuk and then we have a poem about the city she's from and there's my grandparents with my mother and my my grandmother with her sister and then I have a picture of my grandmother and her husband, my grandfather, and my mom is a little girl in the snow. They ran through the snow uh, from Soviet Union occupied Poland to the part occupied by Germany. And then there's a house they spent the occupation in, which is still standing. And this is my grandma. And there I am walking with my brother. All right, so I have a poem that I wanted to read is called Peeling the Potatoes. It's published in a book, um, The Rainy Bread Poems from Exile. Her grandma showed her how to hold the knife, cut a straight, narrow strip, keeping the creamy flesh nearly intact, ready for the pot of boiling water. Don't throw any food away, the old refrain. My sisters, Tonya and Irena, lived on potato peels in Siberia. The girl is confused. She knows Chocha Tonya, glasses on the tip of her nose, perfectly even dentures. But Irena, who is that? They were all deported to Siberia. Not sure how Irena parents died. Of typhus, of starvation maybe. They used to pick through garbage heaps, look for rotten cabbage, kitchen refuse to cook and eat. They cooked and ate anything they found under the snow, frozen solid. The water's boiling. Babcha guides her hand. You have to tilt the cutting board toward the pot. Slide the potatoes in. Don't let them drop and splash you. What happened next? The orphan children went with the Andres army and the Red Cross to Iran, Switzerland, Chicago. The kitchen fills with memories. Mist above the stove. Grandma piles up buttery, steaming mashed potatoes on her plate. Eat, child, eat. Ten years later, Aunt Irena came to visit. She looked like grandma, only smaller. 
her legs were crooked. So that's the first poem uh, I wanted to read from this book of poem about wartime experience of civilians who were deported, starved, and somehow survived. So the other poem is my mom. I think I have at the end the last poem in the book. It's entitled Language. Language is all there is. All you take with you when you go from country to country, carried by the winds of change. The merciless gale of history blows you backward to the time before homes were homes, before love. Hold on. Language is all there is. You leave your sentimental treasures, a miniature flower vase from your cloistered grandmother, brown like her Frank Franciscan's habit and warm eyes. A worn sapphire set in an ornate gold ring that brought in Moscow for your mom's engagement. Scarred by work and trouble, washing dishes, work, always more work. A suitcase of photos you are too raw with grief to open. One day, you say, I promise I'll do it, one day. Language is all there is. Words slip back under the avalanche of hours. What you took was yours then. What is theirs now? Rough tones of Polish mountain village resound through the gilded salons of an LA mansion. They speak a 17th century peasant dialect in Quebec. Out of one accent, not yet in another. You sound foreign everywhere, to everyone. You keep your word in between kingdoms. One day, you will find new treasures. Language is all there is until this new day comes. So these are my two poems from The Rainy Bread. And I'm going to stop sharing screen and turn the laptop towards Bori, who is sitting right here, right next to me. And Bori has a going to read from our wonderful anthology. So here it is. Okay. Let's see if I can find my poems. <laughs> okay, uh, I think we have, it's uh, alphabetic order, so not, not, too, not too hard. It's yeah, of poets and then okay. 142. 142. You're better at this than I am. I mean, I, I worked <laughs> on the book back and forth. So there's the anthology. And here's okay. there. So I'll just read uh, two short poems in here. In the moonlit night, passing waves of crescent hills, skulls of village warriors mound into pyramid temples. 30 years, the mute witness of the moon, how to recall the god kings. Encore among Tulang and Dwarf Strangler figs, like a barrier reef, tower above the surrounding water. Turning molt of milk, the monkey god of Ramayana gestures from inside the stone. 54 hand carved mountains, faces guarding points on a compass, eyes half closed, smiling their irony, not stinting their pity here in the moonlight. Lost tribe. Here the land is covered with nothing but dust throughout the year until winter and the hope of rain hover above snow capped mountains. At night, I wonder if the unpaved roads lead back into town, to Babylon, while I search through sandstorms and camouflage. My hands carry only a compass and map I haven't learned to read yet. Only cold breath in front of me as I run. The midnight breeze supports a wren on its flight from one barrel of cactus to another, standing like totem poles guarding the city. Was there ever a chosen people destined for emerald hills, milk and honey flowing like water from a cistern? Instead of drought, instead of winds, whipping the fields and darkening the skies for days. The rain clouds could turn this land bright yellow like sunflowers in March. I run in the desert awakens at each footfall. Courts and feldspar underfoot recall the luscious grasslands of the savannas, which are now the directionless white sand dunes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Laurie, and thank you, everybody. Do we miss every, anybody? Is any poet would like, oh, Casa Bella would like no. to say something. Casa Bella is Casa Bella. Ask <laughs> Maya, Maya, maybe Maura could show some of her paintings or something she wanted to show before, because I think it would work now. Yeah, because we have the share screen for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted Let's to. Try. I don't know because <laughs> I've sort of gotten myself confused here what I'm doing, but let's see. Oh, let's see. Okay, so you look at the paintings. Sure. And now okay. anybody, yeah. because we are the close, so we could unmute everybody if anybody has any comments. Oh, thank you very much, Maura, for beautiful poetry. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Thank readers. It was really lovely to have everybody here. And, uh, children's poetry and grandma's poetry and wisdom poetry and war poetry and music poetry and jazz poetry and all sorts of poetry and short and long and different languages and it was all very good and there is Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow did this ever come up? Did you ever see it? No there? nothing came up. Oh gosh. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would like to try again, and I've been able to share, but since we were doing this advanced system that we worked, oh. it could have failed, but I'll try one more time. It is actually up here. Let's see. It's very nice of you to try to see my poems. Here it is. Yes. It is. Yay. Finally, <laughs> victory. Why don't you read it? Read it. This is victory. It. This is the one that Marjorie <laughs> remembers that she helped me write, and this is... Um, as you see, it's a shape poem. <laughs> okay, peace, peace wreath for the world, threshold in twilight, candles at dinner, dreams in the air, reborn as winter solstice almost, a new year on our wall, calendar. Hope for the lost 60s. Flower child may keep the faith for Che, for John, Yoko. Still today, we do believe we shall, we will overcome someday and live peace. <laughs> That's the poem. And, and there were some. With the peace symbol. Yeah, it was a peace symbol. Thank you. And there was some art pieces too. I just, I don't want to take up everybody's whole night looking for this, but I really appreciate it. I, I had some more paintings, but what you could do would be simpler if you want to take time is look at moraharvey.com. Uh, I think it'd be easier. That would be easier. And thank you for your, so nice to be appreciated and to meet you all. <laughs> and, and thank you for asking me to share again. Thank you so very much. And I would like to thank all the poets and everybody who attended and stayed to the end. This is a special thing to stay all the way to the end. <laughs> to Alice for your poems and thank you, Bori, for your poems. And uh, I wish uh, we will reconnect again via email to find out what's happening next. But as I don't know, I haven't booked anything yet. So <laughs> we'll be- Thank you, Maya. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 So long. Never goodbye. Bye. Only so long. Bye. 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 Bye.